we've been planning for this voyage for over three years. I've been thinking about it for over a decade. And what we're going to do is depart from Honolulu for the White Shark Cafe. This is a place that the only way we know about it is white sharks took us there. And in this region, there's a gathering place. And why these animals gather here, we don't know. I mean, all of us on here are incredibly excited. And this White Shark Cafe is one of those last real expeditions. We, we know very little about it. We have no idea about why this massive predator is leaving California and coming here. There must be something so important here. Part of this is about discovering what's in the ocean. And the white sharks are leading us there. Why do the sharks come out to this remote part of the ocean? One of the ways we approach answering that question is to characterize the habitat. And we've put together a, a variety of, of tools and, and approaches to let us do that. What are the conditions in the water column itself? Temperature, oxygen, salinity. We're going to be sending sound waves into the water column to see what reflections of that sound tell us about the concentrations of animals versus depth. We're using eDNA to tell us how different species of animals occupy this space. We got some white shark kids? What's breaking news here? Oh my god! The first try! Wow! We've been using the sail drones as scouts. The sail drones have been out here surveying the region in advance of our arrival and they will continue to survey it while we're here. And they can alert us to things that may be just over the horizon. It um, communicates to us a lot of the sensor data. We get summaries to give us an idea, for example, where we should be sampling on this vessel based on what, they, what the sail drones have seen. We're using net toes to go down and, and collect animals from different parts of the water column so we can see who's here. There's something really special about bringing the net up. It's like unwrapping the president, and then inside is this trove of just beautiful creatures. Just looking at the animals is pretty awe-inspiring, and so it's hard not to get excited when you see these creatures with totally bizarre morphology. And you know, what does it mean to live mostly in the dark? For me, there's no substitute for direct observation. I want to see what's there. And if I can't go down myself, then the best thing is to use is a, an underwater vehicle, a remotely operated vehicle. This tag is a pop-up satellite archival tag. It has a light sensor, a temperature sensor, a pressure sensor, and it has a very accurate clock. It goes on the white shark, the white shark carries the tag, and then at a point that we've programmed into the tag related to this voyage, it pops off, the float brings it to the surface, and it sends radio transmissions to Earth orbiting satellites. And we're now recovering each of these instruments as it comes up. When we get the tag back, it has second-by-second second behavioral data and environmental data on what the white sharks do. Nice one, Mick. <laughs> it's a female. It's been on for five months. Three-second interval data. Wow, we got a bite on it, too. Look at this. 
Look at these deep chips. Oh. Look at that, a lot of rapid oscillatory diving here. This is spanning one, two, three, four, five days of intensive diving. It just continues. Wow. Look at this. That's oh incredible. Oh my God, look at this. That's this guy is active. So this is right up when the, until the tag popped up. It's got the most yeah. intense diving about here. That's really cool. We're in a spot where rapid oscillatory diving is like really intense right now. Yeah. Look at this, day and night. It's gold, you guys. It's just gold in the form of data. <laughs> that is so cool. trying to recover the glider. It is at the surface, drifting. Um, we're having a little bit of issues getting it to give us an updated location. Probably it's getting covered. We're still in the water? With water. It's still on the surface, yeah. Right here, I think I could give you a bearing. Although Otis is mainly focusing on the oceanography and measuring what's going on um, underneath the surface of the ocean, Otis can also listen for tags that are in different species so we can kind of use Otis as a sentinel underneath the ocean kind of spying on who's down there for us while we're up on the ship doing all the other amazing science. The high seas covers almost half this planet. And in the high seas, there are very few rules. It's almost the Wild West. And so if we're going to save white sharks and other iconic animals such as tunas and other sharks for the next generation, we have to start thinking about where the boundaries should be, where the protection should be. This cruise is actually a beginning in which we're going to go out, offer the opportunity for policy changes that protect a region that no one would think about needs protection for white sharks. Through new knowledge, we can reduce ignorance and then translate that into action.